Hemingway, there are two things that always bring out the crowds. A removal van and a hearse. Cheery as ever. Well, at least with a hearse, there's a lot less unpacking. <laughs> no enough for me if I wanted to move house. <coughs> we tried. You couldn't hear us. Tammy, we've been through all this. Come on. And you. A new dawn awaits. Don't look, Hemingway. We told him he's a Rottweiler. <laughs> and the truth, kill him. <laughs> Everything okay in the van? Hey, okay. Oh, I've got to see Mr. Bertloff was all right. Well, I'm pretty sure the new people look after him. I mean, after all, it's not every house that's got an invisible yellow dwarf living in the cellar, is it? <laughs> no, thank you. It's an emotional occasion moving in it, Mr. Rugby. These aren't just homes. They're rungs on the ladder of success. So, what impels you on this voyage of discovery? A new opportunity? The nomadic instinct? An addition to the family? I lost my job. A sense of Medarota. <coughs> Ask a silly question. All right, William. Start her up, the old son. Yes, It's like the old days going backwards. My heart goes out to that family, William. Where are they going to put all their stuff? That's their problem. I'm not a ruddy interior decorator. <laughs> well, I am not bringing my friends back here. It's all dark and smelly. Then they should feel very at home. <laughs> Does it have a swing, Daddy? No, but there's a gibbet round the back. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> Not open. It's a bit stiff. <laughs> um, Mum, why is everybody staring? Oh, you know what they say. Smaller the houses, friendlier the people. They're probably wondering who's this wimp who can't open his own front door. There's <laughs> <laughs> somebody pushing back. Oh, oh, that's it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I would carry you over the threshold, but I'm not sure about the floorboards. Some chance. Even when we got married, you said you had a bad back. <laughs> well, you know why that was, don't you? I do wrong is on front. I do French <coughs> and biology. All in, who's going in? Welcome to Rokeby Hall. Tammy. I think Luke fancies Pia. <laughs> yeah, he tripped her up when she was coming out of Miss Selfridge with Geraldine. <laughs> I used to think he fancied me. Not that anyone would when they find out I live in this armpit. <laughs> oh, you should see it. My adolescence is blighted, Anushka. <laughs> yeah, it's really gross. I mean, it looks like it hasn't been decorated since World War Nothing, and there isn't even a neighbour under 35. <laughs> Cool. Even the phone's gone to see now. You ever thought of joining a library, Mr. Ropey? Or starting one? Sorry, tools of the trade. I'm a writer of sorts. I haven't oh. seen some of these for ages. Don't break into a sweat, Pete. <laughs> okay. I'll uh, go and get some milk, shall I? Yeah. Shall be long. <laughs> hey, look at these. The turn of the screw. The way of all flesh. Lord of the flies. Hey, you better keep these away from the kids, Gav. <laughs> I've been married 20 odd years, and you know my wife's read a book every night. Yeah? She's only got three chapters to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, what sort of writer are you then, Gav? I write adverts. Oh. If you need a leaflet writing, I could squeeze you in. Armitages of Harrow, a moving experience. It's, it's an old syrup of figs line. My sister used to advertise. Yeah? She put cards in local tobacconists. Oh. None of us even knew she spoke French. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to write a novel. Cool, Bennett, you don't write them as well, do you, Gav? No. 
But I'm hoping this house will inspire me. Oh, blimey. You into gothic horror then, sir? <laughs> <laughs> gothic horror! <laughs> 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 Good evening, Welcome to Meadow Road. Oh, thank you. I'm Avril Jessup, but all my friends around here call me Jesse. There's no Mr. Jessup. I buried him last year. Well, I had to. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Ruby. Nice table. Well, off you go. I'll let you get on. You don't need me rabbiting. No sign of any problems yet. What sort of problem? Listen to me. Stop it, Jesse. Nothing. Nothing, Sal. This is really neighbourly. Probably just a coincidence. No one living there for more than three months. Ever. In all these years. <laughs> well, you must come in for a coffee, Mrs. Jessup, one day. And you must come round for a brandy. <laughs> there I go again. I'm getting worse. Oh, Hemingway must have found a bone. I wonder whose. <laughs> Ignore me. Ignore me, Sal. Oh, nice chaise long. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best house I ever lived in. Ever. Emma told me Claudia is having a party for her 15th with no parents. See me having a party in this nostril. I'd rather hire a morgue. Here's a good one. Bleak house. How about great expectations? What about tea and sympathy? Kettle's on. Ah, <laughs> oh, souvenir of our honeymoon. He answers to Fernando. He was 800 pesetas, but Pete bargained and we got him for a thousand. <laughs> Money's never been my strong point. Oh, blimey, come on, cheer up, Mr. R. Remember, one door closes, another door opens. And waiting to come through that door could be the great goddess opportunity. Oh! Who did that? <laughs> He's always tripping up that, William. No, no, no. Like I was blown over by an icy blast. Chilling, it was. Draft excluders. Sally, put him on your list. <laughs> you know the last job he had? He dropped an entire bone china tea service. What did you do? Well, he had to drink out of a mug, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Well, wasn't that nice? <laughs> what? Our first nine o'clock news in our new slum. Sammy. I'll tell you one thing about this house. It's spotless. And David's taken to it like a duck to water. <laughs> like a pig to you know what. <laughs> I'll take your name in a minute. Well, I still don't see why you were sacked. I prefer redundant. My boss and I had a difference of opinion. I liked me and he didn't. <laughs> and that's why I've sworn never to work for another boss again. Apart from your mother. <laughs> he's on to his third warning with me. Well, I just hope he realises he's spoilt any chance I had of a meaningful relationship with the opposite gender. Even casual sex looks a bit iffy. <laughs> I told you to hide that cosmopolitan. Try not to lose too much sleep over it, Tams. You wouldn't sleep anywhere in this kennel, eh, Hemingway? You're going barking mad too. Well, that's not fair on a rock violer. He needs somewhere bigger. <laughs> like Bavaria. Daddy boy. Easy. He probably doesn't like the smell, do you, Hemingway? What smell? Can't you smell it? I noticed it the first time we came. Well, it's sort of like, um, well, I don't know. Well, no, I do know. It's chicken soup. Chicken soup. <laughs> Sally, you know. No, that was anchovies and coconut milk. Remember? Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> hey, maybe the last woman used to dab it behind her ears, darling. I'm wearing chicken soup number five tonight. <laughs> so expect some foul play. Yes. Now, you people, we've got a busy day tomorrow. We're going to make this place our own. 
Sammy, you just chuck all your stuff on the floor of your room. Soon feel like home. But it is home. It's our home. In a couple of weeks, it'll feel like no one else ever lived here. <laughs> Did he say he'd been depressed? <laughs> ah. That means my slippers are in the tool shed. <laughs> it's too late to find them now. Before writing the great Mancunian novel, Peter Rokeby was an advertising copywriter. He was responsible for the famous Welsh Corp campaign, We'll Keep Her Welcome by the Tillsides. <laughs> and he single-handedly invented Saving Grace, the lovable building society squirrel with the golden nuts. <laughs> Peter is married to Lady Sally and lives with Hemingway in abject squalor somewhere off the North Circular. <laughs> no. Before writing Great Mancunian novel, Peter Rugby was a lumberjack, an Olympic yachtsman, and a freedom fighter in Angola, and I'm just practicing the book jacket. <laughs> Do you think I'd look better with a beard? I think you'd look better with a book. <laughs> Poor old Fernando. Ah, no more ole for him. He was the only souvenir of our honeymoon. What about Tammy? <laughs> Pete, we're going to be all right here, you know. Yeah. Yes. It's not exactly where I wanted to be at 39. And a bit. And a bit. Perhaps your mum was right when she warned you not to marry an ad man. You should have stuck with Eldon Parfit. Eldon Parfit kept bringing his work home with him. So? Pete, he was a gynaecologist. <laughs> oh, you'll find clients before our cash runs out. And if not, I'm an experienced social worker. That pays well. And I'm a pretty good cook. Well, you could run a home for battered fish. <laughs> I don't know what I ever saw in you. Young, socially aware lady from Good Home County stock wishes to meet down market Mancunian with the sensitivity of a Viking. <laughs> Hardly match of the day. Do you want me to show you why you married me? Hello? It isn't Wednesday, is it? <laughs> Go on then. Oh, I love powerful men. Sally, you can fix that. I know where your tools are. They're in the in suitcase. The now, don't lose your thread. And when the earth moves, it isn't the underpinning. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good trick, Peter. Yeah, even I'm impressed. <laughs> Pete, what was that? Hmm? What was what? That noise. Didn't you hear it? No. But remember it and tell me in the morning. <laughs> Promise? There it is again. No, I still didn't hear it. What did it sound like? A sort of groaning. It's probably the house. I'd groan if I was seven Meadow Road. <laughs> Go down and have a look. It could be burglars. Oh, yeah, they groan a lot. Except cat burglars, they meow. <laughs> Pete, please. Well, why don't you go the don't hit women? <laughs> I need me sleep. I've got a long day's unemployment tomorrow. <laughs> ah, slippers. Tool shed. Oh. <laughs> Where's the door? I had that when I came in. <laughs> Hello, anyone?